Welcome to the Arty Crowd Out Loud, where we get inspired by talented artists, explore local art spaces, and discover arts opportunities and events happening near you. I'm your host, Megan DeVicio with Hamilton Arts Council, and today joining me is Lori Lemaire, owner of Lori Lemaire Studio Inc. right here in Hamilton. Lori has been a decorative painter since 1988 and specializes in restoration and application of historic decorative painting work and fine art. She's taught and worked internationally, and you may, you may also recognize her from forming the Hamilton Aerial Group. Welcome, Lori. How are you? Thanks, Megan. I'm good. <laughs> good. Awesome. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. Um, so let's get started and just go back to when you were first studying art restoration, decorative painting, faux finishing. Um, yeah. um, what inspired you to, to get involved in those fields? Well, I, I always wanted to be an artist, I guess, since I was a little kid. And... Um, yeah. I didn't have the art, like a, a, a portfolio to, and probably the confidence to apply to art school. And I ended up going to McMaster for English. Mm -hmm. But I met somebody at the time who had a painting business in Toronto, and I ended up marrying him. And he showed me, he had somebody working for him that did decorative painting, which I'd never heard of. And he showed me this vase that looked like it was made out of marble. And you know it was yeah. it was plaster or something like that, and I couldn't really wrap my head around it. I didn't understand. What do you mean it's not marble? You know it looks like marble, and so that was sort of an introduction into that. And we went over to England and we took a class mm -hmm. there, and we learned a bunch of techniques. And um, I found I was really good at copying, really, yeah, because that's what it, it, that's what sort of faux finishing is about copying things, so okay. making things look like real wood or real marble or semi-precious stones. Just like making surfaces look like something else that yeah. um, fools your eye. And we came back to Canada and opened uh, Canada's first school for decorative painting and faux finishing in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And it was called Written Studio back then. Um, and we did a lot of, lot of work, uh, residential and commercial work. Um, mm -hmm. We had three divisions, so we made all of our products as well. And we taught a lot of people. And uh, we had a school, um, a site division, and a product division. Um, but then we ended up separating um, mm -hmm. in 2000. And mm -hmm. I started my own business then. Yep. And uh, I was in Toronto still. But I was mostly doing um, like residential and commercial work and teaching a lot. And a, a church approached me to, do, to restore um, the Stations of the Cross. Mm -hmm. And so, because of my knowledge of um, paints and products, uh, I was able to, to do that. And then somebody else approached me to restore a painted pillar. It was, it was painted to look like marble. It was an arts and crafts home in Toronto. Okay. And they just wanted it, it had been banged up, so I mm -hmm. fixed it all so it looked like it was, like it still all had the original painting on it. I just fixed yep. all the holes and made it look um, complete. Wow. And think, oh yeah, and then Spadina House in Toronto approached mm -hmm. me to do a floor cloth for them to replicate the original floor cloth in there. Okay. So those were sort of the three things that I did that were more restoration. Mm -hmm. And so when I moved to Hamilton, I really wanted to do more of that. Mm -hmm. And I went to Dundurn Castle and talked to the curator and saw that they were about to put out, um, they were going to ask for submissions. Uh, f to restore the main hallway in Dundurn Castle mm -hmm. to make it look, bring it back to the way it looked in 1850. Wow. And the walls had all been painted to look like um, Sienna marble, like blocks okay. of Sienna marble. And so I put a bid in for that and I won that contract. Wow. And that kind of got me my foot in the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, because uh, that was a, a fairly, um, a fairly, for me, it was a fairly high profile job. Yeah. It was pretty big. And, um, and it was so interesting because I just love restoration because it's like a bit of detective, a detective work. Because cool. um, you have to kind of, you have to figure out what uh, mediums were used originally and okay. um, you have to figure out sort of the layers, how it was done. And it's also interesting to think about, you know, it may have been done 100 years ago, 150 years ago and yeah. what, who did that? It's normally a man would have been doing okay. it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but just like what their lives were like at that time, and yeah. you know what, what brushes and what mediums were available to them. I just find that really fascinating, right? And the techniques that they would have used then. Yeah. How do you replicate those now in your yeah. work? 
Um, well, it's, it's, when I did Dundering Castle, I was asked by um, the person that was uh, in charge of that job. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to do it all exactly like it would have been done then, wow. like with the same tools, everything. Wow. Um, so I didn't use uh, any tape. Okay. So we wouldn't have had masking tape yep. back then. No scotch tape. <laughs> no. We used plumb lines and straight edges for yep. to, to draw out all the blocks. Yep. Um, and then just from uh, just doing a lot of reading and from my I guess my education in England, yep. I know um, what mediums were used. And I was using a lot of the same mediums mm -hmm. um, for a long time, like a, a lot of oil um, mediums, okay. until um, the development of a slow drying water blade water based medium that um, I was able to um, uh, use instead of the oil but when I first started I used oil and uh, so yeah. that's what I did I used uh, just I made my own oil glaze from linseed oil turpentine and dryers mm -hmm. and I also knew in the um, the scientific analysis that had been done of the reveals do you know what I mean by the reveals? Yes, when you peel back, if yeah. we're talking about paint, you peel it back and you see what was underneath. What was, that's right. Yeah, yeah, something like that? Okay. Yeah. okay. So there's a company in New York that's hired, uh, a lot of museums bring mm -hmm. this company in to do these scientific analysis. Mm -hmm. And then I get that report and it'll say um, how many layers are in that finish. So if it's a, like, a, like the marble, mm -hmm. I think there were three layers. The first layer was water-based, they said. Okay. The second and the third were oil. And so I know back then, a lot of time they would use beer as the um, as a vehicle and and mm -hmm. pigment, and so that's what I used. Because and beer would have been plentiful at Dundurn Castle at that time too, because of cholera. Nobody was okay. drinking water; they were afraid of it. So right. it, apparently, even the kids got their ration of, of beer. They would have made beer in Dundurn Castle. So I used yeah. Guinness because I thought that was the closest to what yeah. they would have had then. Right. And uh, and I did all the all the uh, grain uh, the veining. Yep. Uh, and the movement sort of in the marble with that and then did an, another layer of oil glaze and and another step of, of oil glaze as well. Yeah. That. yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sounds very technical. Lots of different elements and very mm -hmm. complex. Um, you've done additional amazing projects here in Hamilton such as um, the Gage House, Battlefield Museum, yeah. White Hearn, just yeah. to name a few. Yeah. Um, why would you say or how would you say that Hamilton is conducive to this type of work? Oh, it's such an important city really mm -hmm. a, a, in history you know mm -hmm. the head of the lake um, and it's been it has all of these old buildings it's too bad that so many of them are gone yeah um, but there's still a lot left and um, yeah. yeah so it's it's got it's got a lot of museums here yep and um, and it needs my work, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely, to restore it and make it mm -hmm. look like how it did back then. Let's talk about how your approach to art restoration has evolved over the years? Um, well, I'm getting a lot more uh, jobs doing restoration. And yeah. in fact, I would say that the, uh, the highlight of my career so far has been um, restoring the colonial building in St. John's, Newfoundland. Yes. And uh, I had a fairly large crew that worked with me. That was uh, two years ago we were there, mm -hmm. um, 2022. And we were there for six months, just over six months. And it was it was just a treasure trove of decorative painting in that wow. place. Yeah. Um, around, I think, 18, 1840, 1850 is when we were okay. restoring it back to. And there were reveals had been done all through there. And there was uh, marbling, wood graining, a lot of wood graining, gilding, um, uh, semi-precious stones, like uh, uh, reproducing like porphyry mm -hmm. finishes. Um, and then the whole ceiling had been painted and it was flaking off, so we needed to restore that, the original painting that was on the ceiling and keep that intact. And how did you approach that? What was your, uh, lots of research um, on this? Well, I, I got the scientific analysis. It was the same company yep. I was talking about before. Yep. And I poured through that. Yeah, I was there. Um, I did a lot of research beforehand. Yeah. Figured out all the finishes, although when I bid it, a bid on the job, I hadn't mm -hmm. been there yet, so I had to just look at photographs and figure it out, yeah. um, what it was going to be like. And but when we got there, you know, we've just we we know color theory. We mix our colors and we match what was there. And yeah. And with my experience, I was able to match the finishes as well. Wow. And what's oh. the what are the different techniques that you use to uh, whether you're matching or the different techniques that you used on that colonial building? Um, well. Gilding it was one mm -hmm. of them, so mm -hmm. applying gold leaf. Um, 
And wood graining was, there was a lot of wood graining. So mm -hmm. back then, uh, a lot of times, cheaper wood would, would be used for trim and doors, and then it was painted to look like more expensive wood. And so most of the, the um, building was painted to look like courtesan oak. Okay. Um, and so that's a specific technique that you have to really practice to get down because right. it has a specific markings in there of quarter sawn oak. And is that with the the horsehair brushes that you uh, yeah, we get used that, that one? We okay, used the yeah. floggers. It's called floggers. The horsehair flogger. Yeah. We use that. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh, badger hair softeners, hog hair softeners as well. Wow. And cutters and motlers, those are specific for wood graining. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are those uh, those types of animal fur that's used in those, that's all um, very realistic to what have been, would have been used at the time, oh, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It used yeah. the same type of brushes, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And they're still made in England. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So did you use them when you went to England to, to learn? I, I bought them. I, I also order them because yeah. I, I, get, I, get, I replace them. Yeah. And I order them online and get them shipped, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <England>. wow. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And how long did the project take overall? And can folks find um, out where well, to see it now? Probably, um, probably almost a year with all the research beforehand. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's open as a museum now. Beautiful. So it was the original seat of Parliament in St. John's, which yeah. they have they have since moved. Um, but now that it's it was all painted white at some point, so it okay. was all brought back to look like the original. And uh, yeah, it's open as a museum. So if you go to St. John's, Newfoundland, you should yeah. definitely check out the Colonial Building. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> I'd love to travel there, and so mm -hmm. that'd be on one of my stops. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you said that was a very pinnacle point of your career. Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was such a huge job. Yeah, and I had I think. Uh, I think eight, eight or nine people working for me wow. for those six months. Um, but I'm also I'm working on a church now in, in Windsor, restoring uh, some murals there that we had discovered who the the uh, artist was, which uh, the the church wow. didn't know, and we found a signature. And he's wow. quite famous, Nincieri. He's from uh, originally from Italy, yep. and knew how to do fresco painting. Okay, and uh, painted in a lot of the churches in southwestern Ontario. Yeah. Um, and lived in Montreal, and there's a small museum dedicated to him. But I had never heard of him. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's a huge learning opportunity for That's you right. and your team, but also just to teach the public about who were the original painters mm -hmm. and designers of these yeah, buildings. Yeah, Beautiful. It's, it's great fun. Yeah. And speaking of which, you have an upcoming trip to I Italy do. to teach. Can you tell <laughs> us a little bit about that? Yeah. It's. Uh, it's I've here. <laughs> I've been um, to Italy. I've taught these classes probably um, maybe 12 times. And uh, it's it's a working farm in Tuscany, and it's uh, they produce olive oil and wine, very good wine, uh, all over Italy. It's very good wine, I <laughs> <Yes>. guess. <laughs> and um, and so they have a villa and some buildings that they uh, rent out. And so okay. I rent the building, and um, uh, we all stay together. And we yeah. I get an Italian chef to come and cook our meals, and then wow. during the day we paint and we create. In the past, we've created. Um, People create their own paintings of mostly um, like figurative paintings, portraits. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time we're doing uh, Italian ornaments, so grotesca, okay. um, sort of a uh, hand painted ornament, and it's sort of filigree, mm -hmm. and um, and so sort of these grotesque uh, faces and birds and odd shapes wow. in there that oh, you see cool. all over Florence. And it <laughs> wow! <laughs> so we're going to imitate that. We're going to sort yeah. of take that reference and copy that. And then yeah. that's the first week. And the second week, uh, I'm having a guest instructor teach true fresco painting. So it's called okay. Buon Fresco. And okay. it's, um, do you know fresco painting? I'm not familiar, no. So it's, uh, you, you, you paint into the wet plaster. Like okay. while the plaster's wet, you use pigment and water and you paint into that. And then mm -hmm. it dries within the plaster and it, it lasts. That's why like you can go to wow. Pompeii and you still see those frescoes there. It lasts forever. And was that, a, has that been a, an art form that's been relatively new? I'm assuming people back in the 18th century weren't doing that type of That's a really painting. old. Oh, is it? Uh, okay, Michelangelo okay. Oh, did oh, frescoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very, very old. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. not a lot of people do it uh, yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, you can imitate the look of it, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. So how can people, if anyone's interested watching, how can people learn more about coming oh, on this trip? And yeah, they can yeah. go to my website, uh, yeah. .com, um or my, on my Instagram, at laurielemaristudio, yeah. and uh, yeah, you can sign up there. Fantastic. And is there anything um, that you hope, if there were a couple goals that people leave uh, your retreats with, anything that you hope uh, folks get out of it? Oh, I think just having 
just being relaxed and yeah. and having a great time with other artists and enjoying you know touring the area and yeah. um, just leaving relaxed I guess nice <laughs> well it sounds beautiful um, so thank you so much for sharing that and yeah. um, I hope that anyone interested in watching does connect with you and learns how to sign up and yeah. um, unfortunately we've reached the end of oh, okay. our time together which is <laughs> quite fast. sad but <laughs> but thank you so much Lori for coming on and, and teaching us a little bit more yeah. about what you do my pleasure awesome thanks <laughs> To connect with Lori, visit the Artie Crowd and search Lori Lemaire under the crowd. Next, we're going to discover the events and opportunities that are happening in and around Hamilton that you can get involved with. Meet me back here after this short break.